We bring the news. We bring the action. We bring it live. This is 101.9 High FM. Good morning and Good morning. welcome to the Kavanda Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And we are live from Svat Israel this morning. And it is the third of Tishrei. So it is the first day of our brand new year. And we have just come out of two absolutely magnificent days of Rosh Hashanah. And it corresponds to the date of, oh, I, can't even, I don't even know the secular date. That's a sign of having been living in Israel for six months is I'm not au fait with the, the secular date as I am with the Hebrew date. So we've just had Rosh Hashanah and it's be, it was absolutely magnificent to be in the, holy, in the second holiest city in the world and to uh, the first day Rosh Hashanah I went to a particular davening where they're nursing a, a, a father who has a, a, a disease and with this disease he's it's a degenerative autoimmune disease and they gather the, a community around him so with his respirator with his with everything they've got an, a Torah scroll there there's a, a whole man's minion and then all the women and it was very very special to be in that energy with somebody that is just very very pure it was a very very amazing experience and the first out Rosh Hashanah I had the privilege of being with Rabbi Lon Anavani's family his beautiful family and uh, just experiencing my first Rosh Hashanah night here was wonderful and then the second day Rosh Hashanah I managed to get to the the shul of the it's called the, uh, the, the Admor uh, Avraj, and it's Avraham Dov um, Avraj, from Avraj, and he, that shul is over 500 years old, and to be davening in a shul that's over 500 years old, that actually survived the two earthquakes that hit Svat, and then last night I've got, I bought a beautiful book on Svat, and I was just reading up about the earthquakes, and how they, they literally flattened the city, how, you know, the terrible disaster that it was. And yet this particular shul did not, it was not touched. And um, Alon will, may, maybe if we've got a bit of time, I'll share the story of the miracle how, of how the shul was actually saved. And then before I knew it, Rosh Hashanah was over. And so that brings us to this morning and my very, very special guest and co-host is joining me now um, to uh, so to, just uh, for those of you who need a little bit of an introduction to uh, Rabbi Lon Anava he experienced a near-death experience and has returned to the world in full force and to share his experience and to share all the knowledge that he's gained from this particular experience <coughs> excuse me so welcome, Alon. Good morning, Shana Tova. How are you? So thank God, I'm very, very well. I was just sharing with the listeners that I went to the the um, uh, Admor um, Average Shul the second day of Rosh Hashanah, and it was absolutely a magnificent. Uh, besides being a magnificent shul, that I managed to get a peek into, uh, you know, after the service had finished, it it was just such an amazing feeling in the shul. And the fact that um, it, it survived two earthquakes, where very little else in Svat survived. It's a very, very special show. Yes, yes, very, I could feel special. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this morning we want to do a question and, and answer session. And uh, so I was just, uh, just asked Alon before the show as to what is the, some of the most popular questions that he's asked. And he, um, he receives uh, as o over a thousand emails a day. And one of the most commonly asked questions that he gets is how to deal with the loss of a loved one or how to get over it or how to cope. And um, so that's what we're going to be speaking about. And it will probably take a great deal of the show. Um, so I think maybe let's just go to our first break and then Alon will go into answering the question. You've seen them on the History Channel and now they are on your radio. 
to business. This is 101.9 Chai FM. Good morning and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And we are live from Svat Israel this morning, our first show of, of the year of Rosh Hashanah, after Rosh Hashanah. And uh, I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava, and we're going to, we're about to tackle one of his most popular, his most often asked questions of how to deal with the loss of a loved one. And uh, for those of you that would like to send some comments or questions in, the, we are able to receive questions via the SMS line. So the SMS line is 34519. And then the on-air email is onair at chayafem.com. And you can t- tweet at chayafem.com. And then, um, yes, yeah, so that, those are the numbers. And then you can also phone if you, if you want to. You actually can get through. And they will definitely send the call through to us. 074-654-7335. So Alon, just getting down to the question just in, in terms of the physicality of, of the death of a loved one. Um, I don't know um, if, you've have, if you've read any of Rab, um, uh, Rabbi. It's a, a secular book by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. No. So, sh- so at the, in the 1950s, 60s, where people actually didn't speak about death, they just would wheel the person who was dying into a side ward and pretend they didn't exist. And I was nursing at the time when they were doing those kind of things and just denying that the person was actually going to die. And even the patient themselves were often not told of their diagnoses and never had a chance to actually deal with it. The family didn't get a chance to deal with it. Sometimes the families knew, sometimes they didn't. And then she started to bring it out into the open, to bring it out into the light and to speak about it because she found people... You know, you've often described in your in your videos of how the parts of the soul begin to leave as a person is approaching death. And so from the secular point of view, she would make notes as to as the person was getting closer and closer to their passing, as they'd start to communicate with their with people that have passed over to the other side. And um then what she also noticed that with people that were either dying themselves or dealing with the, somebody dying in the family or somebody having passed is that they go through five stages of grief. And so that's what she wrote about a lot and besides the fact of actually bringing it out into the open. So now we're going to look at the spiritual side of it and um, in terms of how does a person? I mean, one never gets over it. It's you know, it's worth. It's there forever, but you know, just over the time that um, that's very, very sharp and bitter and painful. You know, people often actually cannot handle the pain of it. And if you can answer that question as best you can, <laughs> so over to you. Thank you very much. Well, unfortunately, this uh, topic. Is more personal than general exactly like you said some people deal with it worse than others and there's not a general answer because each individual is completely different and the basics of the answer is that the cycle of life ends with death so it's a natural thing we all going to go through it there's no one that is going to stay uh, uh, living forever Till the coming of Mashiach, of course, when Mashiach is going to come, we're not going to experience death. But unfortunately, for us as humans, that's the cycle of life, that it ends with death. And I'm saying unfortunately for us humans, because for the soul, that's just another journey that ends. So we look in it as a very devastating final thing. But the soul just finished a chapter in its life, in its journey, and it's moving on to a different journey. And the soul is eternal, and really life is eternal, but not in a body. And the grief and the sadness is on our part, not on the soul's part. The soul is not crying when it leaves the body. It's actually very happy to finally leave this world and to finish and complete its cycle and its mission. 
and it's getting united with its relatives, whether it's parents, grandparents, siblings. So only on our side there's, a, there's grief. On the side of the soul, it's actually, it's actually happy. It's happiness. They say, our sages say that there are two happy days in the person's life, and that's the birth date and the de death uh, uh, date. Because this is when the soul finished its mission. That's the day that God decided, that's it, you, you're done. And only on our side, we see it as, as, a, as, a, as a tragedy or something uh, sad. Uh, often the question is asked when a person is crying, when somebody died, uh, why are you crying? Are you crying because that person left the world or are you crying because you're left behind alone? And in most cases, we cry because we are left behind alone. We don't cry for the fact that the soul uh, has left the world. If the person uh, left the world after suffering an, an illness and the person was suffering for months or years, it's finally over the suffering. So we actually should be happy that that's it, the suffering is over. And if it's a person who lived their life to their fullest, we should be happy for them because they achieved, hopefully, everything that they were supposed to do. So really we mourn our loss, not, yes. not the fact that the soul that the, uh, left mm -hmm. the, the world and the body doesn't uh, exist anymore. But when one looks at the cycle of life from, from the spiritual part of it, death is not the end, rather it's the beginning of the new life of the soul. And it's only a short separation because we're only separated from that individual for 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, sometimes even two years. And then we also go there. And once we go there, we get reunited with our loved ones. So it's just a short separation. So one needs to look at it in a, in a way that the soul, what, what is the soul going through? Not what I'm going through. Now, if I suffer tremendously because the loss of someone and I'm the one who's lacking the communication then really I'm mourning my loss and not the fact that the person left the world but I have to be a little bit for one second a little bit less selfish and say hey you know my loved one just now is in a much better place and you know when a person loses his uh, parent when the parent leaves the world in the age of 80 or 90 as hard as it is at least you know you you that you enjoyed the parent for your entire life. The parent uh, lived a full life. So it's much, the pain is less. Mm -hmm. Rather when you lose a loved one in an early age, or chas uh, v'shalom, a child, or after a, a tragic death, that's when it really, really is painful. Mm -hmm. Because you feel, wow, he, 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 she, they didn't live their life to their fullest and they left the world when they were 20 or 30 or 40 yes. or the the death was tragic or or the person went through unbelievable uh, suffering so to really explain to a human being why everything happens in this world and that, and that really when a person suffers in this world before they leave the world is actually a good thing yes. and a lot of people they suffer by seeing their loved ones suffering tremendously in a hospital before they leave the world for a couple of months or for a year or battling a, a bad disease and the ear will not accept the information but the reality is that when a person suffers before they die it's a very good thing for the soul because every dirt that is accumulated on the soul due to our actions is being cleansed by that by that suffering so unfortunately all of us we're not we're human we don't do we don't do a hundred percent what the, the torah tells us and what god tells us and we do uh, some mistakes here and there some of us do it deliberately some of us do it uh, by mistake but the reality is that we're not perfect and we have also so unwanted things we lie here and there we cheat here and there uh, here and there's some gossiping. I'm not talking about severe sins right now. I'm talking about even even though that lying and cheating and gossiping is severe sins, but we all have our share. So what happens to our soul when we do these negative actions, such as sins, it puts a stain on our soul, a spiritual stain on our soul, that when the soul leaves the body, it has to be cleansed before it's ready to be elevated to a much higher place. And if the person doesn't clean it in this world by doing tshuva, by repenting, then the soul will have to deal with it in the world above, which is not so, it's not so pleasant. 
the Kadosh Baruch Hashem is so merciful in some cases that he makes the person suffer in this world and he cleanses the soul completely that when the person is ready to leave the world he doesn't have to deal with suffering in the world above and the suffering in the world above is not comparable to the suffering in the world below so really when you see somebody suffering before they leave the world is actually a very good thing for their soul it's just us that it's hard for us to see the person suffering Mezad Hashem will continue more after the, the break okay so we're going to our second break we'll be back with you now you've seen them on the history channel and now they are on your radio craziness <laughs> The best part of your day at the heart of your community. All the talk, all the music, all the news. Hi again. Good morning, Good morning. and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind, and Soul. And this morning. We are um, live from Svat, and uh, I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava, and we're speaking about one of his most popularly asked, asked questions. He gets over a thousand emails a day that he actually s sits and answers quite a few of them, and uh, um, and this this particular question we were just dealing with and speaking about now, and um, it's how to deal with the loss of a loved one. And just before the break, you were saying that for the actual person that's going through it, it's really something that is a, a joy for the soul. And as you said, the most happiest days of our lives or happiest time of our lives is the day we're born and the day we, we pass on to the next world. And just a little bit of, uh, you were speaking about pain and suffering, just in terms of what that means for the soul that before it passes over. Yeah, well, the most important thing to really understand in that because if we're concentrating on our pain then you're right how you started the conversation by saying people never get over it mm -hmm. uh, that's why the answer is is usually much better when it's personal because it's easier to deal with it. some individual they feel guilt in the death of somebody other people feel guilt for the fact that they didn't apologize or patch things up. Other feels uh, 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 they have a strong dependency on that individual. In most cases, the the loss, the the, the suffering of the loss, it's it's coming from the one who stays behind, and that's why it's very it's very it's it has to be dealt with individually because each individual sees things different. But in general the way to deal with the loss of somebody is by actually understanding what is the love my loved one who just left the world what are they going through because in most cases i know many people that they when they come to understand that their loved one is in a good place then it calms them down they're they're more relaxed they're not so worried a lot of people they tell me i i feel that they're in a bad place i'm worried about them maybe they're not happy what what, what are they going through uh, in a very short explanation, what happens is that before the soul comes down to the world, uh, it comes down to the world with a mission. First of all, all of us are reincarnated because we didn't complete our cycle. Well, the teachings of Kabbalah explains that we all have to come down to the world as many as times as we need to complete all 613 mitzvot, the commandments, in, th in, in three levels, thought, speech, and action. And not necessarily that I came down to this world. People think that I come back down here in a reincarnation because I was punished for something that I did in a previous reincarnation. In a lot of the cases, we just didn't complete our cycle. So God has such mercy on us that he says, okay, I'll give you another round, another round, and another round. In many cases, we did mess up something in a previous life, and we're getting the opportunity in this life to fix it, to correct it. So ultimately, when you're thinking about it, we come down to this world with a mission and we're kind of hired like a contractor. So we don't work on an hourly base, we work <laughs> on a contract base. <laughs> and God tells us, this is your contract, this is the mission, what you need to complete. Uh, one uh, reason why we come down to this world is because that each soul has a certain amount of godly sparks that it has to elevate back to their source which the teachings of Kabbalah explains that when Adam Rishon and Chava were in Gan Eden, in heaven, and they sinned, they caused this godly light to explode and shattered all over the universe, which caused millions and millions of godly spark to, to, to scatter all over the world. And by us 
following the mitzvot and, and, and saying brachot, blessings and prayers and many other acts that we do, what the Torah tells us to do, we're able to extract the godly spark out of its shell, out of its husk, and elevate it to, to its source. So really we are all hired here to do a job. Each one is hired to do a different job. That's why we find ourselves in different countries. That's why we find ourselves with different traditions. That's why we find ourselves in different sects in Judaism. Yes. Because each and every one of us has a job, like a trade, like a, a, a crew of, of men building a building. Each one has his own trade. One is the plumber, one is the engineer, one is the architect. We also have our jobs. And when my job is done, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. So it's in some cases we live our life to our fullest and in some cases it's it was originally intended that a person would live only for 20 years because he didn't have much time much to do here he finished it in 20 years in some cases unfortunately people can do severe sins and they get judged to die much earlier before their time so we don't really know why and and what's behind the scenes but at least we can we can be sure that our, the soul of our loved one is going to a much better place. Even if chas v'shalom, that person didn't live according to the Torah and, and did a lot of sins, and the sins not necessarily against what the Torah says, rather sins against other people. There are two types of sins, one between man and, and God, and one between man and a man. So between man and God, that's a whole different calculation. Now, in a few days, we're going to celebrate Yom Kippur, and God says, between you and me, I'll, I can forgive you for the sins you did. If you didn't keep Shabbat, if you didn't learn Torah, if you didn't say the blessing after eating, or you didn't do what I tell you to do, that's between you and me. I'll, be, I'll forgive you if I need to, if I want to. But between one man to another, that I can't interfere, that's between you and the other person. This is what's called Ben Adam Lechavero. If you humiliate somebody, you, you, didn't treat, you mistreat that person, you steal from him, you cheat that person, and so forth. So, we don't really know behind the scenes what's going on. But we do know that if the person lived their life in an honest way, then they are going right away, not right away, but there's a trial for a whole year that the soul goes through. But eventually the souls go back to a better place, and hopefully they achieve what they're supposed to do. And they, go, and they get elevated to where, from where they originated from. So first one needs to learn the entire background of the journey of the soul. And since it's a very long topic, I have a lecture online. You can find it on my website and on YouTube. And it's called The Journey of the Soul. I believe it's a four-hour lecture that I cover in a very gen general way. What happens to the soul from the day it's created till it goes back to where it originates to and originates from and it's a very interesting lecture because it's kind of even though it's a very general lecture it's not in depth because we have so much sources and literature for every step of the soul but this lecture really gives you an overview of the journey of the soul and once you understand that you actually understand that wait a minute the the death of my loved one is not only about me first mm. of all there are other people who are suffering here mm. and in many cases for example, uh, uh, when a spouse dies. Mm -hmm. So I've seen many cases that a husband died in an early age mm -hmm. and the wife is suffering tremendously, but she doesn't necessarily understand or sees that the children suffer more than her. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, the person becomes so, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, like they lock themselves inside themselves with their grief and really they don't even notice seeing that they're causing more grief to the people around them because they can't, uh, they, they, they can't help or, or be there for other people. And that's why the, the, the whole issue needs to be addressed very personally because in some cases the grief is from unbelievable feelings of guilt. I didn't do that and I shouldn't, shouldn't have done that and I could have done this and if I would do this maybe this would happen. And really one needs to have a real good life coach that guides the person through that time to make the person understand you didn't do anything. It all comes from, the, the, from God. You have no control over it. If the person was supposed to live, he, he would live regardless to what you would do or say. And, and one thing that one needs to take from that, especially the people who have a very a strong guilt, is that... To learn from that, that every day is such a, uh, an opportunity 
to patch things up and don't not to wait for things. Some people they have an argument and the argument or the fight goes for years. And then Chas Shalom, a person dies and the the person who remains has this unbelievable guilt for years. I couldn't I, I didn't say goodbye or I didn't apologize or I didn't patch things up. Which just that that is just enough for a person to to learn from that how valuable our life and days are. That not to leave anything unopened, and if there's an argument or a disagreement, not 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 to let it not to let it go too many days without patching up, because that's where the separation starts, and then to patch it up is even harder. And then if chas v'shalom, the person leaves the world, then the one who stays behind lives with this unbelievable guilt that they couldn't apologize or return something or or appease the person. But mainly when one needs to concentrate on when, when they lose somebody, first of all, it's totally natural that the person has to, to, to be sad and to grieve. Even our Torah tells us that you have to mourn for a whole year. And the Torah makes you mourn that in the first seven days you have to sit Shiva. You have to, to, to mourn the loss of the person. And then you continue for 30 days. And then after that a whole year, the Torah tells you you have to mourn the person for an entire year. And that's the length of time that it takes to, to cure the pain of the soul of the one who, who left behind, not the person who left the world. Mm. But the Torah tells us after the year is done, that's it. You have to stop mourning. And then the rest, the, the, the pain, God already completes. The problem is that sometimes people don't mourn the, the first year. They don't get it over with. It's almost like not taking your antibiotics when the doctor tells you to mm. take it. And the doctor tells you, I, I wrote, you have to take the antibiotics for 10 days, not for 8 days, mm. for 10 days. And if you don't take it for 10 days, you're going to get the virus again. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take the antibiotics because you think you're smarter than me, then, it's not, then you're going to get back the disease. So here the doctor, God, tells you, you have to mourn for a year. And in the morning, there's many, many, many things that we do. Whether it's saying Kaddish, whether it's not listening to music, whether it's not, not celebrating certain things. There's a whole list of things that one needs to do in that year. And it's not to make our life annoying. People come and tell me, I don't understand, why can't I listen to music for the whole year? And, and I try to explain to them, this is part of the morning. And maybe you don't understand it in the physical level, but in the spiritual level, there is something going on by the fact that you don't listen to music because the music does affect your soul, whether it's a good music or bad music, it does affect your soul. And by you putting your soul on a diet and not listening to music for the whole year, our sages did not invent it for nothing. There is a process that is cleansing your soul and fixing your soul for the loss of your loved one. And if you don't do it, then the morning uh, uh, period is not done right. You're not taking your antibiotic the right way. And then you're going to will continue suffering from the loss of that individual for many more years because you didn't take the antibiotics the right way and you're not going to get rid of the symptom. Mm. So when God told us what to do and what not to do in that year, the spiritual things in behind it. It's mm. not just to make our life annoying or restricted. And when a person really mourns the right way, and the year is over, the rest of the pain, God already completes. Mm. And if a person didn't mourn the right way, then they will suffer for many more years to come because God is the one who covers the pain. And I know people who really, they mourn the right way the whole year and the pain is over. I mean, you never, you never forget the person mm. and you always carry a pain in your heart. Mm. That is a given and mm. don't even think that one can get rid of that. Mm. You will always carry this little void in your heart for years and the more the person was close to you the void will be bigger and the more the death was tragic it will be bigger and the more the, the, the person died when they were younger and if it's so much more so if it's a child or it was in a tragic way there's always going to be this void mm -hmm. but the the remedy for that is to know that it's a it's a break mm -hmm. it's not for it's not mm -hmm. eternal mm -hmm. it's just a couple years that i'm not going to see this individual and then we get reunited again the soul is eternal and the connection is eternal. Yes. So the point is to understand from that, that, that A, I have to mourn the right way. And, and the Torah gives me the exact explanation that, that a lot of people, they don't sit Shiva. Or during the Shiva, they, they don't really follow yes. the, all the, all the, 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 I don't want to say rules, because rules doesn't sound nice. No. But they don't follow the, the instructions that God gave us. It's the wrong way. It's because it's a healing process. And when a person sits down 
for seven days according to the instructions that our sages gave us based on the Torah. It's a healing process for the soul and then the pain is much less. Mm -hmm. Because the, paper, the soul of the deceased is able to connect to the soul, to your soul, and soothe the soul because the pain and the mm -hmm. suffering comes from the soul, not from the body. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pain that a person experiences from the body is maybe a lack of finance or a lack of, of uh, uh, love or attention. But the real pain that a person uh, feels from the loss of a loved one is from the soul. So you need to treat it on the level of the soul. And if a person is able to, to mourn the right way and also let go of the person that died, then the soul gets healed on the spiritual level. And then slowly, slowly, the soul does its job because the soul knows that it didn't lose connection with their loved ones. Mm. Even in fact, in a very high spiritual level, the souls are still connected and it feels it. So the point is to, to, to know where the soul is going, how to let go, to mourn the right way and to let the soul do the job behind the scenes. And when a person is holding on very strong to the loved ones, a lot of people, they keep things in the house for yes, years. They call it and, shrine. And, yeah, yeah and, and that's very, very bad. I mean, you have to, to keep certain things as a memory, mm -hmm. but some people, they, 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 they don't move anything in the mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Don't touch it. Don't sit on this chair. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very, very not healthy because the person, first of all, it's very bad for the soul because the soul can't let go. The, we explained in one of the, the interviews that the soul has five levels to it and the lowest level that is called nefesh stays in this world for the first year. And if a person behind holds too much things in this world, the nefesh, it's very hard for the nefesh to leave the world even. So in most cases, people, it's very hard for them to let go. So they constantly try to bring back the person back into this world. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of understanding, no, the person's time to leave, I have to let go. And the faster you let go and you let the soul leave, that's where the, the soul will heal on a spiritual level, not on a physical level. And the more you hold things in this world that remind you of that person, then the soul cannot leave, the soul of the deceased. And the healing process is taking years over years over years. It's almost like, you know, many years ago I broke my hand. And after I broke my, after they removed the cast, they, I had to go through phys th physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. And the doctor told me, because I wasn't really coming so often, I was busy, I told him, I, I, I don't wanna, it's wasting my time. And he told me, if you do your three months therapy, your physiotherapy, I promise you, you're not gonna have to come back here and your hand will go back to its uh, original state. But if you don't come and you neglect it, I can assure you, you will be coming here a lot. And then the physiotherapy is not going to help. So we have to do spiritual physiotherapy and know how to slowly, slowly release and let go of the soul of the deceased. And that's the only way that heals my soul to be able to let go at some point. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Alon. So let's go to our next break and we'll be back now. Good morning and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul of Imuna. We live from Sfat, Israel, and I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anava, and we're speaking about uh, one of the, his most asked questions of how to deal with the loss of a loved one. And Alon has just given a beautiful, beautiful insights in terms of the fact that it is more the, 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 the pain and the suffering that one that the we are experiencing in this world is because our, it's our pain. If we were to really, really, really realize that the loved one is a, in a far better place, maybe not maybe, it, we would feel a lot better. But it's a very, very difficult uh, concept or reality to actually experience. It's a it's very easy to think of it intellectually but to actually internalize it and bring it down into one's own experience, I think is a very big challenge. And um, I was also just thinking while you were talking that a person that's very secular, that uh, goes through the loss of a loved one, they I, I often see they like a rat on a treadmill. They, some of them will really listen to what you were saying about the, the laws of Shiva and going really getting into it and doing exactly according to the book and go through the whole year going through the book and if it's a male 
going through the three times a day of Kaddish, um, and what it often does is actually bring them back to to being a Baal Shiva. They actually it brings them back to Hashem. So that I've seen as well, and then I've also seen people do exactly the opposite, where they begin to, because of their own pain, <coughs> they begin to attack Hashem. And so what would you say to, uh, about somebody who is more secular and who doesn't have the tools and the, the vessels to be able to cope with the reality that the, the soul is in a better place? I've seen many, many secular people that exactly how you said, they became much more closer to Judaism because of a loss of somebody. And I, I met so many people that they lived their life, lived, live their life very secular. But when somebody of their family died, they were beyond particular that the burial is going to be the right way. And unfortunately, I've seen also the ones who don't care about the burial, which that actually causes another component for the for making the 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 coping harder when the person is not buried the right way and the soul of the deceased is suffering. So the ones who are left behind, it's harder for them to let go. But uh, for the secular people who 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 don't really understand the, the spiritual part of it, or the people who, are, who like you said, attack God because they feel that God is punishing them. First of all, like I said before, there's not really a black and white answer because each individual is different. And not too long ago, I was in a lecture talking about my near-death experience and there was a boy there that lost his father, a teenager boy, 16 or 17, who lost his father three weeks before the lecture. Wow. And he kept coming in and out and in and out and arguing mm. and, and, and asking questions. So his answer had to be completely different because mm. he was... In, in his level what he could understand mm. so really there's not a black and white answer for anyone because each, in, each individual is different some people will accept it some people don't want to hear about it so it's really hard to give a, a flat out answer what to do the the only way where, where one can do something is to try to find the right individual that will be able to give over the information in a very reasonable way and here it doesn't do, it has to do with with religious or observant or not. I met many people that are not observant at all, but they found a, a, a comfort in the fact that the soul is eternal and that the soul is actually an afterlife. It didn't make them more observant. They maybe they light lit up a candle or something because just uh, because that's what they felt. But at least they found comfort to know that the soul is eternal and that one day they will meet them. I meet a lot of people that they don't believe in the afterlife and they yes. think it's uh, over. So really there's not a, there's, like I said, there's not a black and white answer. And I know the majority of people that I met that they lost somebody, they did go and search for answers and they mm -hmm. found spirituality. I would say in a ratio of maybe 6, 30, 70, 30% they it doesn't affect them spiritually or they become very uh, angry at God but 70% do go and search is their life after death mm. what's going what happens to them after death and then they get closer so for these people that's how I, they find me because if you google now if, is their life after death or, or near <laughs> or stuff like that mm. my 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 <laughs> videos will pop up yeah. That's how I get a lot of my followers because people told me I lost a loved one. I wanted to see what's going on yes. or people who are about to die and they want to know what's waiting for them. Mm -hmm. And then they find my videos, Baruch Hashem. So, but for the ones who don't, if a person wants to be angry at God, he will be angry at God for, no, mm -hmm. for, uh, for anything. Yes. He will find a reason yes. why to be angry. And if Hashem made it that they lost a loved one, then he gave them an excuse to be even more mad at him. So that has nothing to do with the death of a person. That's an excuse that I'm right now in pain. I need to blame it on somebody. Somebody has to be at fault here. So the easiest one to blame is the one who doesn't, re doesn't react. I'll blame it on God. So that's not the problem of the necessarily the death, rather the problem that the person is dealing with. Now I've met situation that a person was very sick and, the, and, and, and I met not too long ago an individual and I met a lot of them, a lot of the, this type that I met an individual that the father was very sick so the person started doing a lot of mitzvot and he started putting tefillin and eating kosher and keeping Shabbat and then the father died 
And then he got upset because he told me, listen, the rabbis told me that if I become more religious, that it will save my father. And it obviously it didn't save my father. So he, he was just misguided and, and, and how the, whoever rabbi told him that did a very big mistake by telling him, if you put filling on it, will save your father, which was a very big mistake to say that. He should have told him, listen, your father's sick. If you will pray for him, and if you will do more mitzvot, there's a greater chance that he will maybe, there'll be a miracle and he will be healed. But his healing is not depending on your mitzvot. So that individual, and I meet a lot of people like that. I met not too long ago a lady who was completely uh, 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 against God and the Torah. And her husband was very sick. And some rabbi told her, cover your hair and I promise you your husband will oh heal. Gosh. And uh, she covered her hair and she started becoming kosher and all the rest of the stuff. And of course, the husband passed away and she got so upset. And she was like, these rabbis lied to me and they made me do these, these mitzvot, these commandments, and nothing happened. So one needs to know that it's very important for us to pray and to, to, to get our act together, so to say. But that doesn't necessarily will change the situation. If the person has to die and that's the decree, that's the due date. That's the end of the contract. Our prayers might help or maybe make the pain uh, softer, but it's not necessarily going to be the salvation. In many cases, yes. In many cases, I've seen people that the entire family took on themselves to, to get closer to God. And it was, there was a miracle. The point here is to, for the people who don't look at the religious part of it or that they get upset at Hashem is to understand that it has nothing to do with us. And it has nothing to do if I do mitzvot, if I don't do mitzvot, if I follow the Torah, I don't follow the Torah. There's a God to the world, there's a, a ruler, a king, a, a leader to the world, and he has his rules. And if somebody's contract is over and it's time to go, that person will go no matter what you're going to do, no matter how many doctors you're going to go to. That's the time, that's when the person would leave. And it has nothing to do if you're observant or not observant, or if you're doing mitzvot or if you're not doing mitzvot. The answer to a person who's not spiritual is that that anything that happens in my life is a sign for me to open my eyes. Yes. And if I see that we're, we're, we're all going to die at some point, I'm also going to go there. Mm -hmm. Then, And if it doesn't affect me to open my eyes to search, is there something after this world? Then I can, the only thing I can say, I mean, I have a relative that totally doesn't believe in life after death. And I keep telling her, you really think that millions of people, you just put them in the ground and they become manure and story's over? I mean, even when I was not religious, I didn't believe yes. that it's the end of the story. So it's, it's for us to serve as a sign and open your eyes. There's something greater than this world. There's something much bigger than this life. And by me losing a loved one is for me to open my eyes and say, wait a minute, maybe one day I'm also going to be buried in the ground. Where am I going? What am I doing in this world? Did I come to this world to just work a nine to five job and to have a nice car? So a person who's not observant or not spiritual needs to look at this as a sign that we all end up in the same place. Must be something greater than just waking up in the morning to run after another couple of uh, dollars and another vacation and a bigger house and another car. So that should serve as a sign that there's something out there. There's something after we leave this world there's, there's something much greater than this, this world and this life. Uh, and, and once you start searching for that, you do get the answers. The point is just to get educated about the topic. And when you get educated, you know how to deal with it. That's the most important thing is to find the one who can really educate you and the truth. Because unfortunately, like I said, yes. there are so many people who are fake and they're saying all sorts of things that has nothing to do with the Torah. For a person to say, if for another person, do this mitzvah and it will save your loved ones, that's a very, that's a, a very uh, bad way to, to mislead a person away, away from the Torah. So it's important that you find the right educator that teaches you about the spiritual world, the physical world, what is behind it. This, the Torah has so much proof. It's way beyond science. Right? Even science already is proving that there's life after death and that, that we have a soul and so, mm -hmm. more, so much. So it's more about, it's all about getting educated the right way. And when a person is educated the right way, he also knows how to start slowly, slowly pick up the pieces and recuperate from the loss of a loved one. Because ultimately, it's a very short break and then we all get reunited. And when you really internalize that and you understand that, then it's much easier to cope with the loss by knowing, okay, so it's a long vacation.
-hmm. And one day, the, the, my day will come and I'm going to be reunited with that person. And right now, right now, the soul of that person is in a much better place. Mm -hmm. And that in itself should make a person feel much better. And okay. So we're going to our last break. We'll be back with you now. A frequency like no other. 101.9 High FM. Good morning and welcome to the Kavana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And we are live from Svat Israel. And I'm sitting here together with Rabbi Lon Anover, who had a near-death experience. And we're speaking about one of his most frequently asked questions of how to, to deal with or cope with the death of a loved one. And just in wrapping up, we've got a couple of minutes left. And um, I wanted to ask Alon just to go over a few important aspects of w when, when one's loved one passes on. What are the most important things that the, the, the people, the, the, the closest of kin, the loved ones can do to really help the person in their journey? And um, you mentioned that the burial is very important, Kaddish is very important. So if you can just talk about that a little bit in the few minutes we have left. The, 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 all the things that we do when we, when we first of all, bury the, the, the body and after that, uh, one of the most important things, first of all, the most important to the soul of the person who died. And uh, the thing is that this is, has nothing to do with being observant or not observant. I met hundreds, if not thousands of people who are not observant at all. And when it came to the burial of the individual, they were like, the, the burial has to be 100% and it has to be the right way. And they were extremely particular about every little detail. And this is coming from families and, and people who are not observant. Of course, I met many people who are not observant that they didn't want to even hear about the way uh, to do the burial, the kosher way, and everything that the body needs to go through, the purification, and so forth. But the reality is that every little step from the second the person dies for the first year is extremely important, for, first of all, for the soul of the person who died, when it's done the right way, like I explained before, then the soul of the deceased is able to leave the world the right way. Therefore, it's able to connect in a much higher spiritual level to our souls. So the pain is not so uh, uh, harsh. It's almost like a, a, an example. When I leave on my long trips, then, then uh, my wife, my kids, they miss me very much. And I miss them, of course. Why? Because we know, okay, I'm not going to see him now for two, two, for two weeks. But when I'm sitting in the next room, or if I go for one day, I go to lectures here in Israel and I go for the whole day, they don't miss me because they know, okay, before I, before I know it, he's back. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm sitting in the next room, or if I'm sitting in the office, they're like, okay, he's in the next room. I can come in and see him whenever I want. So psychologically... When a person even leaves for two weeks, why should I miss him? I'm going to see him in two weeks. What's, 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 why do I miss him? Because psychologically, I, I, I feed my mind. He's not here. I can't talk to him right now. I can't see mm. him. So the same way when the person leaves this world, if the souls are connecting in a spiritual way, then it's putting much less pressure on me that's left behind. And the mourning and the pain is much, much easier because the souls are communicating so my soul is not sad, so I'm not sad. And it's easier for me to deal with the loss and the loneliness and, and all, all the rest of the problems that come with it. So the most important thing is to make sure that the person is being buried right away. And a lot of people you saw now, the president of Israel died. They didn't bury him for almost three days. And I was oh, telling my wife, God. this poor soul, yeah. they're putting it in a box in, in a 90, 95 degrees heat. I mm -hmm. can't even imagine what's going on. For two days he's on display. Just bury, bury oh, the poor gosh. person. So it's extremely, extremely painful and suffering for the soul not to be buried right away. So it's important to bury the person right away. And that the burial is one of the most important things, that it's done the right way. The body has to go through purification, that they wash the body and they put the body in a mikveh and they clean every part of the body and they wrap it in a talus and there's so many other things. So the burial is one of the most important thing. And later, of course, that you that somebody that was left behind is saying Kaddish for the whole year. The Kaddish is extremely important because it wraps the soul with angels that protect the soul. Then and no bad spirits can harm the soul. 
And needless to say, anything that the family does when they left behind, whether it's learning Torah and dedicating things and donating things to in the name of the deceased, all these mitzvot that they do for the soul, it actually helps the soul more than it helps the people down here. But as long as the soul is in a good place, by default it affects us that are left behind. So anything good that we do in this world, it affects directly us in a very indirect way. Mm. Wow, thank you so much, Alun. We could go on for, for ages on the topic. So thank you so much, uh, beloved listeners, and thank you so much, Alun, and thank you so much, Craig, for always being there on the other side. And with that, have a wonderful Wednesday, wonderful rest of your week, and a wonderful Shabbos. Goodbye from Kavana Friedman. Bye-bye.